Hello and welcome to Psych Guys, where we talk about the psychology of the era, the science of games. I'm your host, Dr. Rachel Cohort, and in today's episode of Academic Ramblings, we're going to be talking about mental health stigma and the media. The focus of this episode are the ways in which mental health representations in the media, and specifically in games, impact the larger discussion around mental health and mental illness. In this video, I will briefly touch on some ways that mental health is represented in games, but the focus is more on the repercussions of these representations. For a more in-depth look on mental health representation in games, I suggest the wonderful video essay that was developed in conjunction with Take This by Hello Future Me. I'll link it below. Also, content warning before we get started, we will be talking about mental health and mental illness, and if that is in any way upsetting or triggering for you, please stop this video here. The media has always been a source of information about mental health. Television and film portrayals, both good and bad, have been spaces where we can understand, explore, educate, and tell stories about mental health and mental illness. In fact, research has found that mass media is the most common source of information about topics related to mental illness. Although historically, media portrayals have been largely negative, exaggerated, and inaccurate. For example, portraying individuals with mental illness as violent, criminal, dangerous, and psychopathic, despite the fact that individuals with mental illness are more likely to be a victim of violence than people without mental illness. I mean, for me, I immediately think of Jack Nicholson movies, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, The Shining, but there are many other examples. When we talk about mental health representation in games, we need to diverge a bit from traditional approaches, as games can portray mental health through characters and stories, but also through game mechanics, think sanity meters, and through in-game decisions where the player has a sense of volition. Like traditional media, mental health representation in games has also traditionally been negative, exaggerated, and inaccurate. As stated by Kelly Dunlap in a 2018 paper, quote, Video games are terrible at portraying mental illness. On a study looking at mental illness portrayals in the top-selling video games between 2011 and 2013, 24% depicted one or more mentally ill characters. Of the 42 individual characters identified as portraying a mental illness, almost 70% of them acted violently and in line with the homicidal maniac trope. This trope has been found to be particularly prevalent in gaming spaces. I mean, Sigma anyone? Tropes related to homicidal maniac or horrific insane asylum are common story devices used to tie up exposition or backstory to provide justification for a character's bad behavior. In a 2013 article in Kotaku entitled Nobody Wins When Horror Games Stigmatize Mental Illness dives into these common tropes if you're looking for a bit more context. This isn't to say all mental health representation in games are bad or negative. There are a few notable exceptions. Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice, Stardew Valley, Sea of Solitude, and Celeste, to name a few. So why does the representation of mental health in games even matter? Why bother doing a video about it? Because digital games are the dominant cultural media form of the 21st century. The industry is massive with millions and millions of players across the globe and the industry is growing. And the representation of mental health and mental illness in the media can have wide ranging repercussions. And this applies to games. Previous research has found exposure to negative media portrayals of mental illness to be linked to negative and stereotype perceptions of the mentally ill, as well as in a reduction in help seeking behaviors for individuals with mental illness. For example, heavy viewers of television, that is those who are exposed to high levels of this kind of media messaging, were more likely to believe that mental health services in residential neighborhoods pose a danger to the residents of those neighborhoods and express less tolerance for mental illness and mental health challenges. Media messages and images that surround us both reflect and produce the way we think about the world. The content of our media traditionally conveys a sense of culture by reflecting our attitudes, beliefs, and priorities. And as seen as the research described above, our cultural values can shift based on the messages that the media portrays, based on the messages that we are consuming, either by reinforcing stereotypes or cultivating new thoughts and ideas. So what's the takeaway here? Well, first of all, game designers need to be more aware of the importance their design decisions have when developing games that portray mental health. Like perhaps don't name an enemy psycho for seemingly no reason, 
or set your game in a mental hospital for seemingly no reason other than because mental hospitals are shorthand to say that you should be afraid, as Dr. Kelly Dunlap likes to say. As consumers of video games, we should be cognizant of these tropes and how they can impact our perceptions around mental health and mental illness. Mental health stigma is a real barrier to seeking mental health intervention, treatment, and care. And poor mental health representation in games can contribute to that. If you're looking for more information about mental health and mental health in games, please visit takethis.org. There are loads of resources there. If you like this video and want to see more, please like and subscribe. And until next time, be excellent to each other and always cite your sources.